According to the federal government's latest household employment survey, the total number of employed workers in America fell by 66,000 from August of last year to August of this year. This is the first time the total number of employed workers has been negative year over year since the COVID recession of 2020. In fact, when this measure turns negative, as it now has, the U.S. is either in recession or headed toward recession. Of course, if you've been watching the legacy media on August jobs data, you've probably only seen coverage of the so-called establishment survey, which is preferred by the media and the administration because it usually shows big job gains in recent years. While the household survey shows a loss in jobs, the establishment survey shows a gain of more than 2 million jobs over the past year. But here's the thing. Most of those jobs in that establishment survey are part-time jobs. And what we're really seeing is an economy characterized by a lot of people taking two or more part-time jobs to make ends meet. In fact, the economy is rapidly shedding full-time jobs, and full-time job measures point to recession. Over the past year, for example, total part-time jobs increased by about 1 million. During the same period, full-time jobs fell by about 1 million. In other words, net job creation during that period has been virtually all part-time. Comparing year over year, total full-time employment has been down for a long time. Over the past five months, in fact, the year-over-year -year measure of full-time jobs has been in recession territory, with full-time jobs down in every month since February. Over the past 50 years, three months in a row of negative growth in full-time jobs has always been a recession signal and has occurred when the United States has been in recession or about to enter a recession. Other measures of employment also point to a weakening economy. August's so-called U6 measure of underemployment rose to 7.9%. That's a 35-month high. Meanwhile, job openings in the construction sector have collapsed. If we take a larger look around, we find plenty of worrisome data in the leading indicators. The Philadelphia Fed's manufacturing index is in recession territory. The leading economic indicators index points to recession. Net saving has now been negative for six quarters in a row. That hasn't happened since the global financial crisis back in 2008. The data is now so weak that pretty much everyone expects the Fed's FOMC to cut the target interest rate at the September meeting. The debate is not over if, the debate is now over how big the cut will be. In any case, many people apparently still believe the Fed will engineer the mythical so-called soft landing, in which price inflation disappears and the economy begins another period of robust growth. Unfortunately, the Fed has never succeeded in doing this, ever. This isn't because the Fed is unlucky or bad at timing its rate cuts. The problem stems from the fact that in situations like we are now in, the Fed only has two policy choices. It has to choose between rising price inflation or recession. Clearly, the Fed's natural preference would be to force down interest rates and pursue easy money policies all the time. The reason the Fed can't do this all the time is because easy money policies cause price inflation, which is a political problem for the regime. So when price inflation rises to politically unsustainable levels, the Fed must cut back on its easy money policies. But an easy money addicted economy, such as the one we are now in, will enter the bust phase of the business cycle once there is less new money entering the economy. So today, the only way the Fed can prevent a continued worsening in economic conditions is to turn back to easy money and again flood the economy with liquidity. However, with the economy now barely past a period of historically high levels of monetary inflation, a return to easy money will cause a new surge in price inflation. This is what happened in the 1970s during the Arthur Burns years. The Burns Fed tried to create a soft landing, but only succeeded in creating stagflation. These are the options the Fed now faces. There is not a soft landing coming. <laughs>